Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. Today we're going to talk about engraving metal with a laser. So I'm going to talk about types of engraving because you might think engraving but actually be etching or removing a coating from the surface. Then we're going to talk about the types of lasers and which are best for engraving and what types of engraving each of those will do. Then we'll talk about the metals that are easy for engraving. And of course, we are gonna look at some examples. So first of all, if you're talking about engraving metal with the laser, you may be thinking of engraving as a deep etch into the material. So something that is very deep that you can feel with your finger. And this is often done with a very high power laser where it sort of melts away some of the material and leaves an engraved surface. Now, not all lasers can do this. You would need a high powered laser and we'll talk about different types of lasers here in a minute. A lot of the lasers that you might use at home would actually do more of an etching of metal. So that would basically be scratching the surface or removing a portion of the coating that is on the surface. Now this is generally like a five to 15 watt laser. And what you wanna be aware of is that an etching can actually fade over time or be removed over time. Whereas an engraving, that first version we talked about, because it's so deep, it would be a more permanent solution for marking metal. The third type we're gonna talk about is a coating removal. And this is where you actually take the metal and add a coating or purchase metal that already has a coating on it. And then all you're doing really in the laser is removing that coating. Often the coating is a color, so it's a bright color, and then you remove it to reveal that metal surface that's underneath. Now this is very popular for tumblers and I've shown that before. However, you can use it with other metal blanks as well as long as they have that colorful coating on them. And the fourth way we're gonna talk about is actually called bonding. So that's where you use a marking spray and the laser actually bonds that marking spray to the metal and then you remove the rest of the spray and you are left with a marked surface where that marking spray has bonded with the surface. So now let's talk about types of lasers. A fiber laser is what you would use for a very deep metal engraving. Recently, the F1 Ultra from Xtool came out and it's actually a diode slash fiber laser, so you can actually use it as a fiber laser to get those deep engravings on metal. I actually don't have a fiber laser to do those examples for you, but that would be one way to get a very deep engraving onto metal. Then you can also use a CO2 laser to get an engraving onto metal. Now, you might not get that very deep engraving with a CO2 laser, depending on the metal and your material settings. However, you can get at least that etched or a shallow engraving look. Now let's talk about diode lasers. First of all, a standard diode laser like the Glowforge Aura or the Xtool S1 or even the WeCreate Vision that I showed a few weeks ago. If it's just a standard diode laser head, you are gonna have trouble marking onto metal. It can't really mark the metal surface and I'm gonna show you some examples because that metal surface is shiny and the light will just not do that. However, you can use the last two examples that I talked about with a diode laser. So you could do that coating removal where you have that bright color coating on the metal and that's my favorite for all wattages of diode lasers. I find that works really well with all different types of wattages if you do a coated metal. Now I also tried the bonding and I must say that it did not work on my lower wattage diode lasers like the Glowforge Aura and the Glowforge Spark. However, with a higher wattage diode laser, you should be able to get that marking spray to work for that bonded look. Now when we're talking about diode lasers, there's also something called an infrared diode laser and the we create vision the x tool s1 are just a couple of examples that you can switch out the head and add an infrared head to your laser once you add that infrared head you're going to get more of an etched look more of a shallow engraving on all types of metal so if you want to go that diode laser route you could consider adding an infrared diode head to something like the x tool s1 or the we create vision when you purchase it or at a later date and then add on that etching or shallow engraving to your metal surfaces. Now, what types of metal are we talking about here? Aluminum is often considered the best material for engraving on a laser, but you can engrave steel, stainless steel, copper, gold, just all different types of metal surfaces. So you are not limited on the metal surface if you have something like the fiber laser, However, as we discussed with the types of lasers, depending on the types of lasers, you might be restricted on the material type as well, just because your laser will not do it if you don't have something like a coated material or that marking spray for bonding to that metal in order to get that engraved or etched appearance on the surface. 
So what I did was I took this bracelet blank, uncoated, it's just metal, and I put it in my diode laser, actually the Glowforge Spark, just to see what would happen. First of all, this version, this color, if I just put it in, I actually had to mark this with a piece of tape because I etched this one on an engraving setting and literally there is no markings on this surface. So this one, it did not mark at all. Then if I experimented with various colors of metal, sometimes it would mark it, but very inconsistently. If you can tell, there's just skips in this engraving and it's just etched the surface. It just sort of removed the coating from the surface and it just skipped around. So it's almost like the light reflected, I'm assuming off the surface and made it skip or the coating was inconsistent. So I thought, well, what if I added like some kind of masking to it so it could see it more using this same blank? And I thought maybe it wouldn't skip as much. So I added this masking as, as you can see, it went over great. But when I removed the masking, it's again, very, very inconsistent. It just marked in some areas and did not mark in others. So that's what happens when you use just a regular metal within a diode laser. Since these examples were with my Glowforge Spark, which is like a six watt, I went with my X-Tool 20 watt and I did a few different blanks. This version, it did mark it. So it's just kind of removed some kind of coating that was on here and you can just barely see this and you can't feel it at all on the surface. So it has just removed some of the coating. However, on these two metals, it didn't do anything. And I used the exact same settings and you can't even tell that these were in the laser at all. So it did not mark those at all. So with a diode laser, you can get very inconsistent results. You might find something that works. However, it might be like this where it skips places. So it may not be a consistent etching on metal with a diode laser. So that's why when I wanna make a mark on metal using a diode laser, I just use the coating removal method. So these were already coated and it just removed that coating. So now I get that look, that metal look, and it's permanent. However, it would not be as permanent as an engraving. Eventually this is going to wear off just like the coating itself would wear off and then you would not be able to see the name. However, this is a great way to mark metal when you only have a diode laser, especially a low watt diode. For the fourth option, which is the bonding, this is a black laser marking spray and you just spray it over the metal and you just want a nice even coat. Then you put the metal into the laser and this is a few examples of what happens if it does not work. So you can see perhaps that this ran through my laser and you can see it marked onto that paint. And the paint just sort of rubs right off if it doesn't bond to the metal. And when I rubbed the paint off in these examples, there's nothing left on the surface. So these three were with my low watt Glowforge Spark machine and it is a dial laser, but it is a low wattage. When I use that same technique with the X-Tool S1 20 watt diode laser, you can see that I actually got a black marking. So this black marking would be permanent. However, it would not be as permanent as an engraving. And then finally on either the WeCreate Vision or the X-Tool, you can change out the laser head for an infrared diode. Here on the WeCreate Vision, I am changing out the laser head. So I'm changing out the 20 watt diode laser head for a two watt infrared diode laser head. Now it is a lower wattage, but because it is an infrared diode, it will do a shallow engraving or etching on metal. So then you just add your blank in and add an engraving to the metal. And as you can see here, it looks great. And you can actually feel this one on the surface. So it is like a very shallow engraving. So now you have options no matter what type of laser you have. And if you're looking to purchase a laser just to engrave metal, use what I went over in this video to decide what type of laser is right for you. Whether you want to engrave metal all the time or that's just one of the options you want when you purchase a laser, you might consider the pros and cons that we went over in this video when you're deciding which laser to purchase. If you already have a laser at home, hopefully this helps you decide what type of metal engraving you need to do. So if you have any questions, drop down in the comment section, ask away. If you like this video and it helped you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week, and trust me, you don't want to miss any of those. Thank you all so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.